Now let's welcome Matt Dillon. He's a bold friend and the owner of Matt Dillon Public Relations. I'm looking forward to hearing his PR tips today, and I'm very excited that he brought his dog with him. Her name is Mama, and this is not post-truth. This is fact. She is so cute. Thank you. <laughs> so, hi, everybody. Hi. How are you? Is she, is she like on the edge? Oh, there? she's she's going to go in just oh, a little bit. It's a you? nice segue. The last guest saying the aliens looking down. I was like, well, yeah. She, oh, my gosh. It's... I was like, can't get better than that. <laughs> and look at, she is ruling the rooster. There you go, girl. Hi, Mama. All right. First, you're in public relations. And we were just talking about the fire Festival. And we have to ask, mm. what was your reaction seeing this all play out in 2017? I, I segueing from that last segment, I heard you bring up the concept of like the marketing from mm -hmm. did they know, should they have said something? There's no way in my mind they didn't know. But when you get to a point like that, that can be all encompassing. That's the segue between PR effective PR is pushing the boundaries and the limits of reality. Hmm. So it's making somebody that may not be as big as they are appear a certain way. So I mean, you kind of got in the, the cog machine there and then it kind of turned into Mm -hmm. what it became. Mm -hmm. Should they have maybe put their hand up and gone, this is a little too much, and stepped away 100%. You know, were they getting paid in buckloads of cash? There's money that's like, who knows? Right. So for me, I was like, that's a historical story that people can study for years to come, most definitely. But it's like, as a publicist, oh, no amount of money would have helped me there. Forget about it. Mm -hmm. No way. You would have stepped away. 100%. Yeah. 100%. I mean, the two of them, Jar I mean, how, how they could let that go on. Mm -hmm. Ego is a powerful thing. And I'm like, that just... And the fact that he's not in prison, Jaro, is even more bizarre to me. <laughs> it's the, the whole thing is like so many facets to this don't make any sense to me. It, it, well, somebody's paying somebody something to keep him out of jail. Mm -hmm. Like they said, there could have been a deal. You know. If Jaro was your client, hypothetically, what PR advice would you give him at this point? No, I think he's... He's of that mindset, I hate to say it, the Kanye West mindset, where nothing is touchable. So whatever comes out of his mouth is reality. Mm. Even if it's so far left of field that you're like, what the hell are you talking about? I don't think he would even need a PR. Because in his mind, he's, he's doing the right thing. I mean, coming out to talking to TMZ, saying you're doing another festival, that close to when all this hype's... No, and I don't... Whatever PR he does work with is... Idiotic. That makes no sense to me. I was like, they're, they're probably looking for the come up too. Mm -hmm. It's again, it's kind of like you look at the levels of celebrity, the levels of fame. People, people, some people want to work with anybody who's anybody just to get that come up. Mm -hmm. I've been in this for like over a decade now. So when you, where I started and where I am now, it's like shh, down. Right. It's not all about the money. It's not all about how many clients you can have. It's about living a nice, comfortable life, for sure. But at the same time, it's about you have to do things with authenticity now. Otherwise, literally, you're, you're going to... The reputation precedes you. So for mm -hmm. me, it's kind of like if you're not living authentically... And the PR, you know, it's not a lie. It's stretch, I always say it's stretching and creating something, but not to the point of the fire Festival, because that's some bullshit. <laughs> going to say that. I mean, you know what I mean? Right, so PR is right. creating something magical, mm -hmm. not creating something that's completely fake. I mean, you can't, an island, a music, it's fabulous. <laughs> Whoever can, fabulous, right. but that's some, yeah. You should have been a nonsense. novelist, not actually. Write a book, it would have been a great money. book. Right, right. Can you tell us about your PR company and your new show called Sippin' the Tea? Yes, girl. <laughs> so the PR company kind of led into this. I I work with a bunch of different celebrities that are on, some of them on Grey's Anatomy, the spin-off Station 19, singers, actors, and I started working with La Palme magazine. So I had, you know, face-to-face -face mm -hmm. contact with the likes of Leah Remney, many other people, and I was like, I'm getting such good juice and tea from them. Like, why not create a concept where I can actually talk to them for 30 minutes and really, once you're in this, mm -hmm. this vicinity together, it's kind of like the walls go up and like it's just the two of us. So it was like, I'm, I'm lucky to do it with one of my best friends, a former WWE wrestler, Ariane Andrew, and we drop new episodes every Tuesday, and we've had, for the wrestling fans that follow her, we've had a few wrestling fans, we've had an actor from the, the History Channel, a bunch of different people, just kind of having fun. And we have the dogs there, too. 
Hence, hence, she's here today. Yes, she is, and she's like, I'm not really. She's like, I'm, I'm chill, I'm, I'm just chill. Chill. But no, it's as far as sipping the tea. It's, it's been an amazing collaboration with Focus TV, which is based out in LA, mm -hmm. and it's it's similar to this vibe. It's yeah. the it's the streaming vibe, and it's the way digital is the new way. Oh, totally. Nobody can afford the cable, honey. So I'm like, why are you gonna have a cable television? <laughs> let's let's do it like this. So for me, it's. It's also like my mental break. When I'm doing business, it's great. But then I'm like, oh, get to have a little chat, pretend I'm a TV host, and life's popping. Let's go. So you said that 15 minutes of fame concept is over. What do you mean by that? It's longer than that. Uh, you can read. Let's use this as an example. And I'm not going to say <laughs> left or right to anything. But the Josie Smollett thing. Have you heard some of the left and right stories about that? Mm -hmm. I honestly believe something terrible happened. How it came to be is different but the the stories that are coming out that he is in cahoots with the two people because he was going to be off there i hope that that's not real mm -hmm. who knows but there are people that are that desperate for fame that they will create something like that so it's like you just have to come up with the zaniest wackiest shit and you're on hmm. it's recreating that we live in a world where the bachelor and the bachelorette is the biggest show on television and that says a lot yeah. That says a lot. It says a lot about what consumers are watching. And it's all about what the consumer wants. So for for that, I mean you look at you look at some of the main actors on TV, they you know, the social component to their like mm -hmm. A list actors, they have very few followers. Yes. The Angelina Jolies of the world don't even have Instagram. Yep. But twenty two million people follow a bachelorette. What world are we living in? So That's I, I think that fifteen minute concept has evolved into the crazy you are and the crazy you're willing to be, you can keep that cog turning. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of scary. Yeah, it it's is. It's kind of scary, but it's also like, it's fun to watch as a purveyor from the side, I think. Right, but I don't think you necessarily want to be the one oh, hell no. to be giving the content. No, unless you're paying a really big check, then we'll talk. <laughs> you know, you got to get that check, honey. To a, right, ethically, as you said. Not I mean, my best festival. friend threw her leg on television, but she's like a chic Upper East Side woman. Real Housewives of New York. Epic uh, moment. Yes. But it's called show, the showbiz. So she gave show right. and it's a business. Right. So you kind of have to look at life and like that world. I mean, reality is one world, but that's like kind of why I moved to L.A. Because it's like, it's a much more encompassing thing. I lived in New York for 10 years. So for me, I, that's, I'm always blessed to come back. I call it home. Mm -hmm. And it gave me that training, that pump and grind and, and what have you. Because even as a publicist, I had to reinvent myself constantly. Mm -hmm. Add in a little hashtag TV host. <laughs> you know, it's you got to be a, a slashy, as they say, right. to, to kind of see if you're not evolving, even yourself. If you're not evolving, there's so many things I want to do. I want to write a book. I want to yeah. do this. So why not? You know, you only have one life, you might as well. Girl, and, and she's up. very expensive, honey. I need those checks, Chad. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, babe. Come back. I would love to. I want to spill the tea with you on yeah. your show. Come to L.A.